two cannonballs of different weights dropping from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Galileo's legendary demonstration may be one of the most famous experiments ever done, if it was ever done. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Thus it was back in 1589, Galileo reportedly proved the equivalence principle, the idea that objects of different weights fall at the same rate, regardless of their mass. He elaborated on this using a system of balls and inclined planes, which slowed down the vertical motion to develop his famous equations about acceleration, predating even the great Isaac Newton. But much doubt remained about how precise and inviolate this equivalence principle really is. So the experiment has been repeated and repeated and repeated in many times and many places. From the Earth to the Moon, the biggest vacuum chamber in the universe, the universe itself. But science is never satisfied. And that's why the microscope satellite system took this experiment to the heights of space itself. But before we can get all the way to outer space, let's go back to the beginning. The basic equivalence principle was worked out by Galileo and Kepler, but it wasn't until Newton came around a half century later that an explanation was found, the law of universal gravitation. That is, the force due to gravity is equal to the gravitational constant, capital G, times both masses over the distance between them squared, the inverse square law. Although the force depends on both masses, the acceleration that object 2 feels is independent of the mass of object 2. It does look like the second law, doesn't it? It's only dependent on the mass of object 1 and its distance from object 1 and the gravitational constant, capital G. Think of it like trying to pull out a chair versus trying to pull out a refrigerator. If you want to pull them out at the same rate, at the same acceleration, you have to put a lot more force onto the refrigerator than onto the chair. The force depends on the mass, but the acceleration is the same. But like I said, the law of universal gravitation, like all laws, is only an approximation to reality. The only way to get further trust in approximation is to get an idea of when it doesn't predict the things that we do observe in the universe. Ever since Newton came up with the law of universal gravitation, he and other physicists have been laser focused on testing those limits, figuring out how precise the equivalence principle and the law of universal gravitation really are using exotic materials and exotic locations over the centuries. Newton himself was the first to try and test the equivalence principle and find its limits. He did this by getting a bunch of pendula together of different masses and proving that they swing back and forth at the same rate. As a side note, this consistency in the period of any simple pendulum is what allows grandfather clocks to exist in all different shapes and sizes. Newton's pendulum experiment allowed him to narrow down the equivalence principle down to an accuracy of about one part in a thousand. Next up to the gravitational plate came Frederick Bessel, who you might recognize as the namesake of the very famous Bessel functions, some which I show here. He did the same experiment and reportedly got the equivalence principle's accuracy down to just one part in 100,000. And then came the ingenious experiment going from 1885 to 1889, straight from the mind of Laurent Etwasch. It's no surprise that the experiment is known as the Etwasch experiment. You see, old Etwasch had the idea of suspending two masses from one spring, attaching a mirror, and shining a laser to bounce off the mirror into a telescope. This setup allowed Etwasch to see if there was even a slight impediment to the laws of universal gravitation. Now, this whole system is balanced so equally that in an inertial reference frame, it shouldn't move at all. And here's where it gets fun. The Earth is constantly rotating. That means it's constantly accelerating. And if you suspend something from it, then it should feel the effects of that acceleration too. Sort of how like if you make a sharp turn in a car, inertia pushes you in the opposite direction. Well, if gravity pulled on these objects by different amounts, it would imbalance the system, changing the inertial acceleration and allowing you to differentiate changes from the gravitational acceleration, even if only slightly. And it could make the rod move in a predictable way, but it didn't. Etwasch repeated the experiment until the precision was refined and published back in 1890. And those results, drum roll please, were accurate to one part in a billion 
from there, and Robert Dickey, one of the pioneers of the cosmic microwave background, further improved it by another two orders of magnitude in 1964. In 1971, David Scott dropped an eagle feather and a hammer on the moon. Here on Earth, the feather falls slower because it's built like a natural parachute, being light enough to be buffeted by air resistance. On the moon, however, there is no such interference and letting the feather and the hammer hit the ground at exactly the same time. He didn't get a super precise measurement, but it was the most dramatic measurement ever done to demonstrate the equivalence principle. And billions back on Earth got to witness this experiment. Galileo a long time ago, who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? More experiments well, following this moves. would further narrow down the accuracy of the equivalence principle up until 1987, when the et Vosch experiment at the University of Washington conducted an et Vosch type experiment and managed to improve by another two orders of magnitude to one part in 10 trillion. And that's where we were for the longest time. Decades passed, and the principle didn't get any more love. But scientists have kept on trying in the name of confirming the equivalence principle, or maybe even finding an aberration, a crack that would allow some light to get through, possibly revealing evidence for forces and features of gravity that we had previously not understood. What was the breakthrough? Well, it wasn't a telescope. It's a microscope. The microsatellite with compensated drag for observing the principle of equivalence. The microscope team has managed to innovate on the Etvosh experiment after it had been the gold standard for over a century. As for how, well, it comes down to two things, space and accelerometers. But in case you're wondering what an accelerometer is, it's a device that accurately measures acceleration. They're used in all sorts of applications, from motion controls and virtual reality to vehicle stabilization, and even gyroscopes that keep a camera stable. They've gotten better and better, and that's what this study called for. Two accelerometers, as identical as they could possibly be made to be, using masses suspended within them from the core of the microscope mission in a setup called the Twin Space Accelerometer for Gravity Experiment, TSAGE, was conducted. One accelerometer has two platinum rhodium alloy masses, while the other one has one platinum rhodium and one titanium aluminum vanadium. <laughs> okay, that's right. They use different types of accelerometers. They work on the same principle, but they have different chemistry. They have different atomic nuclei configurations. So we can test if the acceleration depends on the masses and the composition of these once and for all. These alloys are well-defined in terms of their composition. And as a result, we have well-defined masses. Crucially, what this allows the microscope mission to do is to conduct their experiments with two materials with different proton to neutron ratios. This gives them a lot of fine control over the gravitational masses of the samples. And that's why this experiment was able to get the results that it did. But the experiment is also so susceptible to changes in the heat that the satellites were bound facing the sun for the duration of the experiment to make sure their temperatures were as steady as possible. The equivalence principle was tested by microscope to one part in a quintillion, 10 to the minus 15. The microscope team was able to push the needle a huge step beyond what had ever been done before, imposing ever tighter restrictions on what theories could possibly explain departures from the laws of good old Isaac. At the moment, General relativity remains the lead in that department. To learn more about quantum gravity and its implications, click here. And don't forget to subscribe.